From the moment it started, the happy, hopeful Democratic Convention provided a stark contrast to the dark, divisive message of the Republican Party last month. While the Republican Convention featured a sea of white people sprinkled with a few unrepresentative black people on the stage, Democratic delegates reflected the rich diversity of America. Convention co-chair Mignon Moore, a black woman from Chicago, and Democratic National Committee Chair Jamie Harrison, a black man from South Carolina, gaveled the convention to order. Harrison's two young black sons led the Pledge of Allegiance. I pray so Soul Children of Chicago sang a beautifully black rendition of the national anthem. And NAACP President Derek Johnson told us, And I'm here to do my black job. But the most touching moment of the early evening came when Chicago's own Reverend Jesse Jackson made a surprise appearance in a wheelchair to a standing ovation. Forty years after he electrified Democrats in the 1984 San Francisco Convention with his Rainbow Coalition speech, Jackson is still beloved by the party. Compare that to the MAGA Republicans who kicked out former President George W. Bush, former nominee Mitt Romney, and former Vice President Mike Pence in Milwaukee. They're so hateful that they even turned on the people they claimed to love just a few years ago. Democrats are not. This week's list of speakers proudly featured Democrats Joe Biden, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, Bill Clinton, and Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump? fell asleep at his own trial. And when he woke up, he made his own kind of history. The first person to run for president with 34 felony convictions. Then in an unscripted moment of poetic justice, the crowd chanted, lock him up. The same chant Trump led against Hillary eight years ago when she had committed no crime. Texas Representative Jasmine Crockett compared resumes between Kamala Harris, who worked at McDonald's while she was a student at a historically black college, and Donald Trump, who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth and helped his daddy in the family business. Housing discrimination, that is. And Reverend Raphael Warnock, the Democratic senator from Georgia who pastors at Dr. King's church in Atlanta, gave a sermon for the ages. I saw him holding the Bible and endorsing a Bible as if it needed his endorsement, he should try reading it. It says, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. He should try reading it. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. It says, inasmuch as you've done it unto the least of these, you have done it also unto me. Democratic speakers did not run away from the party's most challenging internal conflict, the war in Gaza. I need the poor children of Israel and the poor children of Gaza. I need Israelis and Palestinians. I need those in the Congo, those in Haiti, those in Ukraine. I need American children on both sides of the track to be okay. Even President Joe Biden, who has been the main target of the criticism, acknowledged he had work to do. Those protesters out in the street, they have a point. A lot of innocent people are being killed. Unlike the GOP convention, there was no 71-year-old former professional wrestler ripping his shirt open in an outdated symbol of party masculinity. No clout-chasing reality TV star embracing a group that attacks people like her. And no party-produced signs threatening mass deportations of immigrants. There were real people like Hadley Duvall, a rape and incest survivor, speaking out about the impact of Trump's abortion bans. What is so beautiful about a child having to carry her parents' child? Kamala Harris surprised the audience with a cameo appearance in a final touching moment where she embraced President Biden as he said goodbye. It reminded me once again that Trump cannot embrace his own vice president because he tried to have him killed at the January 6th insurrection. And that's the fundamental difference between the two visions presented by the parties. Trump's Milwaukee Republicans outlined a negative worldview based on fear. Democrats in Chicago offered a positive vision based on love. Fear teaches us scarcity. Love teaches us abundance. Fear encourages selfishness. Love encourages community. Fear is negative and backward looking. Love is positive and forward looking. Those are the choices, America. Choose wisely.